right. Man, I'm excited. And one of the things I love about these Saturday morning calls is because for me personally, it feels more like kind of sitting around a room and just having a conversation. Um, and I'll tell you, some of the best training nuggets that I've gotten in this space have been when I've just been sitting in a room with people who have more experience, who have had more success, whatever, and just getting nuggets from them um, and learning. So I love these Saturday morning calls because instead of like a training, to me, it feels like we're all sitting in a room and we're just having a conversation. And uh, that's also kind of how Brittany and I prefer to train anyways. We, we just more so uh, talk. So with that, there's a couple things I want to talk about today, and, and Brittany's got a whole plethora of notes, so um, I'm excited. She's way cooler than me, uh, so when she gets on fire, it's uh, it's better. But uh, number one is, are you when you present yourself, is it with passion? Um, are you excited about what you have your hands on? Are you excited about what you're doing, um, or is it kind of a you know, boring thing as you're presenting yourself to people. Um, and I, I say that because that's probably one of the most important factors as to if people are, are going to listen to you. And here's the deal. Sometimes they might think you're crazy. Uh, they may think you're the crazy uh, live good person or whatever, but passion, passion, it, 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 it attracts people. Something about confirmed speaker language, Spanish. I don't know what I'm supposed to do with that. <laughs> I'll just hit save. I hope that, I don't know what I'm supposed to do. I hope I didn't just turn into Spanish. Anyway, a thing just popped up. But anyway, um, and I'm totally ADHD, so forgive me. Uh, but so your passion, when you're passionate, you're going to attract people. There's a saying out there that you don't have to advertise a fire. Why don't you have to advertise a fire? Because everybody talks about the fire. Like if there's a fire in town, you don't need to put it on the news because everybody in town is telling everybody about the fire, right? So you don't have to talk about the, you don't have to advertise the fire. You don't have to promote the fire. When you are on fire, when you become the fire, people start to talk about it, right? And when you become the fire long enough, everybody knows about it, right? And so I, I, I genuinely believe that one of the biggest things that has led to Brittany and me having success is uh, my, it, for me at least, is definitely passion. Because a lot of times I haven't done it right. I haven't, I haven't, uh, like I've messed up a lot along the way. I've done a lot of, I say stupid things sometimes, but I needed to do those things to learn through. Right. So if you are if you have done things that you're like, man, that is why did I do that? Like, it's OK. It's OK. Kick rocks and make dust. Right. You got to learn through. You got to do things. You got to do things that will uh, cause you to learn, cause you to mess up, cause you to fall down and get back up and walk. That's just part of it. But be look, the great thing about live good is you're not in this thing for hundreds or thousands of dollars a month to stay in. Right. You're in it for 10 bucks a month or like $8 if you do the if you do the year, right? So it's not like you're in this thing for a bunch of money to try to figure it out. You're in it for very minimal as you're figuring it out. So it's okay if you mess up. You don't have to have it perfect. You don't have to um you don't have to do it exactly like I do it. You don't have to do it exactly like Brittany does it. Me and Brittany are very different people. How we build is very very different. I'll tell you that. Um uh you don't have but as you do are eventually going to have to find your your groove, right? And and what works for you. I was just talking with somebody the other day about this and I build very different than they build. Um, and I'm I'm more of an organic. Uh, I've gone through my system. If anybody doesn't know it, you can go to buildlg.com. I have it laid out. It's absolutely free. That's not branded to anyone. Um, it's not, it, there's nothing to pay for. It's absolutely free. Buildlg.com. I have the system that I utilize laid out step by step. Um, so, and that's how I build. It's very organic. Um, but that might not be, that might not be the build for, maybe that build may not work for you, right? Maybe, um, maybe there's other ways, other things you want to do, you want to figure out, um, you, you want to, that's okay. That's okay. G finding your groove, being passionate about what you're doing. If you have passion, it's going to ultimately lead, it's going to, you're going to find your way. 
you're going to find your way. Something I wanted to talk about was the sacrifice always comes before, before the success. The sacrifice will always come before the success. The success never comes first. Like, I mean, think about this. That's the thing. A lot of people will have the mindset of like, man, I want to be whatever your goal is, right? But don't want to do the sacrifice. Like imagine that in the gym. That's a great analogy, especially since we are in the nutrition space. Imagine if you wanted abs, but you didn't want to go do the do ab workouts in the gym, right? That would be silly. Imagine if you wanted to run, a, you wanted to be able to successfully run a marathon, but you didn't want to you didn't want to train for the marathon. That would be absolutely silly. And everybody would think that's crazy. And we know that's crazy. But in this space, for some reason, people say, man, I want to have the success, but I don't want to have the sacrifice. Mm -hmm. And thankfully, again, in Live Good, the sacrifice is not like some crazy investment, but there's still an effort sacrifice. There's still a learning curve sacrifice. There's still, and something I really want to talk about is getting around the people, right? This Saturday morning call, it's vital for, uh, for plugging into this is absolutely vital because you're putting yourself around people that you, that can, um, it, uh, I, I'm very, I, I'm, I'm scriptural. A lot of things in my life are based around scripture. So it is what it is if you get that from me. But Proverbs 27, 17 tells us as iron sharpens iron, so does one man sharpen another, right? And so with that being said, when we put ourselves around people, that's going to rub off on us, right? And so I say that to say, um, let's talk about Vegas. Vegas is a big sacrifice, can be a big sacrifice. I don't consider it a sacrifice. I consider it an investment. And what I mean by that is because it's an investment in my future. So when, we, when Brittany and I first got started in this space, it was January of 2015, um, and uh, we had just, the company that we joined, it cost $2,400 to get started. Um, we knew nothing. I was a police officer. She was a 911 dispatcher. We had three kids. Our kids were much younger back then. Now they're almost 20, 18, and 14, almost 15. So, But they were, our baby was not even he was in kindergarten back then. And so um, he, that being said, we we were just looking for something. And and so uh, when we got started, we spent we spent twenty four hundred dollars to get started. Um, we we uh, all because I made a post in a group called Cop Brothers. Right. And some guy said, check out what I'm doing. And I had I, it gave me at least some hope because I had nothing else. Right. Live Good didn't exist back then. Right. Um, it, but so it gave me some hope. And I was like, man, all right, I'm going to do this thing. I put it on a credit card, didn't have the money to do it, but I, I was like, I got to do something because if I don't do something, nothing's like we're going to, we've been struggling forever. I did everything I was supposed to do. I went to college. I got a degree. I'm a former foster kid from Southern Illinois turned police officer who did, who broke the statistical, what I was supposed to be in prison on drugs, all those things as a foster kid. I pursued law enforcement. I did what I was supposed to do. I have a wife. I have three kids. I, I did the what I was supposed to do. And I was 30 years old looking at my life like this ain't working. And so I decided, all right, we're going to do this thing. I put $2,400 on a credit card. The guy who's helping me, he, he's a complete stranger, six hours away, over the phone, he's helping me. We didn't even do Zoom back then. It was all three-way phone calls. I didn't even know what the guy looked like. I barely used Facebook back then. Um, and so I, I'm talking to him over the phone, and we're about three or four days in, and I'm talking to him every single day, right? And that's another tip right there I'll share with you. Um, one thing I've noticed is the people that excel the most, always, always, the people who are excelling the most on my team are always the people that in most communication with me on my team. Mm -hmm. It just always is. So uh, hunt your leader. That's a tip right there. Hunt your leader, whoever that may be. It may not be your sponsor. For example, myself, it my leader was not my sponsor. My sponsor was some guy from a Facebook group that saw me in a Facebook group and connected me with my leader when I first got started in this space. Um, but the people who do the best are always the ones um, who are, especially when new in this space, um, are the ones who are connected to um, con connected to me or their leader or whoever. So that's that's a tip if you're uh, if you are like hunt your leader, bug them. That's what they're here for. Don't feel like, oh, I don't want to bother them. No, bother them. That's that's what they're here to do. They're here to help you. But so back to what I was saying. Um, so when we got started, $2,400, get started talking to my mentor on the phone every single day. And he's uh, and he says, 
we're about three or four days in and he's like, Josh, do you really want this? And I'm like, man, I do. Like I do. I want, like, I need to make 500 bucks a month. Like that's what I need. I need, I need that. And, um, and so he's like, well, Josh, if you really want to have success here, if you're serious, then what you need to do is you need to, you need to get to this big event. Um, it's in, it's in Des Moines, Iowa. Now, mind you, this was January of 2015. I live in Southern Illinois. Des Moines, Iowa is about seven or eight hours from me. Um, and it was snowing, right? It was a major snowstorm. I also worked at the sheriff's department that my wife also worked at the same sheriff's department midnights. Um, I worked, I worked second shift at the sheriff's department. And, and I said, oh, okay, well, well, when's this event? And he says, he says, well, it's, um, he says, it's, it's in like five days. It was like, I think D January 10th. This was like January 3rd or 4th that he said that we, we got started on January 1st. It was like January 3rd or 4th. And he said, oh, January 10th in Des Moines, Iowa. And I'm like, what? I can't do that. I got a 10 day notice at work. If I turn in a day, a personal day or vacation day, I gotta, I gotta give at least a 10 day notice. Me and Brittany would both have to, I, like, we don't, we don't have time. We don't have, I mean, we had every excuse in the world that we didn't have the money. We just put $2,400 on a credit card. We, um, we, we couldn't afford to go up to Des Moines, Iowa. We had, uh, I like every, it was snow. There's, a, there's snow everywhere. Um, and that was further north. I mean, we had every excuse. We had a short notice for childcare. Uh, her parents lived an hour away from where we were. So there's just a number of excuses. And I say excuses because, the obstacle, uh, they are excuses while they're very valid and they can be very valid excuses. That doesn't, just because I call them excuses doesn't mean that that's bad. They might be very valid and they were valid. But the reality is the obstacles in life are not there to keep you out. The obstacles in life are there to keep out those who aren't willing to do what it takes to overcome the obstacle to get where they want to go. And so, with that, Brittany and I made the commitment. We ended up calling in sick, both of us at the same department, mind you, calling in sick, driving up to this event. We were 10 days into this new business that we had just put $2,400 in. To. We had to get back then there was no Airbnb. We had to get the most expensive uh, uh, hotel room because everything was already booked up. We bought these tickets to go to this event. Um, obviously, food, gas, all these things. Right. It's, it was all a big investment and big expense. And so I can tell you right now I, with confidence, had I not done that, had I not been there, I would not be sitting here talking to you today. And here's why, because when I went to that event. There was a guy that spoke at that event that he, he, he was a Nebraska state police officer. He used to be a Nebraska state police officer. And I'm a deputy sheriff sitting there in this event watching, listening to him on stage. And he shared his story and he told me how he did it. And he, well, he told everybody, there's like thousands of people there. And he said how he did it. And I looked at that guy and I said, if that guy can do this, little old Josh Cross from Southern Illinois, who's a deputy sheriff can do this. If that guy can do this, I can do this. He was a state trooper and I, I'm, I'm deputy sheriff. He ain't no different than me. I can do this. And so I just said, all right, I'm going to figure out a way. And I hadn't even started doing anything yet at that point, to be honest with you. I was like ordering business cards and doing like ordering a banner to hang in front of our house. And I was doing stuff. But it wasn't anything that actually made the ball down the court, right? I was just doing busy stuff at that point. And so after that, I came home from that event. And I remember, um, uh, the, I well, actually, before I even got home, I started like using the system that we utilized. And it, back then, it was like three-way phone calls and, and things like that. But I started using that system and pounding that stone, pounding that stone, pounding that stone with the system and and just planting planting the seeds. And I say that to say all this, that event gave me enough belief, also gave me enough connections because that same guy that I was working with just over the phone, he drove to that event too. And I got to meet him, give him a hug in person. And that connection that was made gave me enough trust to work with this total stranger, mind you, um, who ultimately became a good friend of mine. And he's actually, sadly today, they're actually out of the industry now. But nevertheless, um, that being said, 
we uh, if it wasn't for the sacrifice that came before the success, that was mm-hmm. huge sacrifice. If it wasn't for that sacrifice, I'm telling you with confidence, we would not have had enough gas in our tank to push through because the next 90 days was not easy. I'm going to tell you, I had so many people make fun of us, um, but we had we not been in that room, I would have quit. I would have quit. I would have been out of the game. I would have not, we would not have had enough gas in our tank to do what it takes to get through the, through the, through the struggles. Um, So it's absolutely vital um, to, to be intentional about plugging in and, and being willing to make the sacrifice. And I know, I know that there's reasons, there's excuses, there's obstacles, but really ask yourself, like, is this an obstacle I can overcome? Or is this an obstacle? Or is this a real obstacle? Is this an obstacle I'm creating because I want to choose the easy way? Or is this a genuine obstacle? And uh, most of the time, it's an obstacle. We, if we're given the easy option or the hard option, we're almost always going to pick the easy option. The problem with picking the easy option, back to the gym analogy. If we have the option of, you know what, I can watch a fitness instructor on TV or I can work out in the gym, right? If we obviously watch the fitness instructor on TV is a lot easier than working out in the gym. But watching the fitness instructor on TV is not going to get us the results we ultimately want, right? We're going to have to do the hard. But if we choose the hard now, things will be easier later. Whereas if we choose the easy now, things will be harder later. And so I say that all that um, to say just being intentional about saying, you know what, I'm going to make myself, I'm going to make myself do the hard. And over time, the hard really becomes the easy. It's like lifting, it's uh, lifting weights. I like to use that as analogy because it's such a simple analogy. You know, in the beginning, it might be like, man, these weights are hard. But over time, it's like, oh, that same weight that used to be hard to me is actually super easy. Mm-hmm. And the same applies to building a business. Um, another story I'll share with you in the last minute champions is some of the top leaders on our team in this business that we that we had were so I met them at an event we're about a year and a half into this business I met them at a we had just done a local event me and Brittany we were speaking at this local event there was about I don't know 40 people there um it wasn't a huge event or anything and this new couple had just gotten started and they um they this couple they they knew nothing about the industry or anything but they wanted to talk to us after the event and then they said, um, you know, they they wanted to do this. They wanted to have success. And and I said, well, this was a Monday night. This event was that weekend. That upcoming weekend was the national convention for our company, which was we live in Southern Illinois, and that was in Dallas, Texas. So it was about eleven or twelve hour drive. Um, and and they said, man, we want this. And I was able, just like my mentor did with me. I was able to speak with strength and say, hey, look, if you guys really, really want this, you got to be at this event. You have to be you have to be in Dallas, Texas this weekend. They're like, what? Are you kidding? Like, I, we can't do that. Like, it's this weekend. And I said, man, you, if you really, really want this and they made the decision and they got there, they ended up going uh, that weekend and they went on to be some of the top leaders in, on our team um, and, and just absolutely soared. So again, I, I would highly encourage you to, in everything you're doing, really ask yourself, if am I, am I choosing the hard or am I choosing the easy way out? And, um, and that's something for you to ask yourself. Uh, and then the last thing I'm going to talk about, and then I think I'm going to pass it over to mama um, is the, the hype build versus the real build. Mm -hmm. Um, And so in one of the very special things about live good is live good is not a hype build, right? We don't hype up like our product is made from the Himalayan mountains and blah, 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 blah. We're just not a hype build. Yes, there's some exciting things about live good. There absolutely are. But Live good is not a hype build. Live good is a very consistent, stable, um, solid, real build. And what I love about that is because in in our previous ventures, um, what we saw was everything was contingent upon hype. And what I mean by that is 
whenever there's a big promo or there's a new product that's coming out, that's when we see our paycheck go up. But then whenever that hype passes, then our paycheck plummets, mm-hmm. right? And so then we got to find the next hype thing. And the problem with a hype build is that our business is contingent upon a hype build. Whereas in Live Good, we offer such true value, genuine value to people. Brittany and my monthly check has continued to grow month after month after month after month. Our check has continued to grow. Whether that be a little bit or a lot, our check has continued. We haven't seen our check just plummet, right? Whereas in any other thing, we are, it would be like this month it's good, this month it's bad, this month, because it's all contingent upon the hype. Whereas again, in Live Good, it's all, it's it's a real business model, a real business uh, build, like a real business should be, right? And, and so with that, The downside, if you will, to that is that a lot of people want that hype. Like they 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 almost feel like they need that hype. And so when hype happens over here, Mm -hmm. it can be easy to allow that hype to interfere with logical thinking, with rational thinking, right? And keep our focus on the focus because it's like, man, yeah, but this is this so exciting over here. But it, it seems like this, the exciting things are happening. People are making big money, blah, 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 all this stuff. And it can really cause us to get off track and off focus. Um, I compare it to if, and this might not be the best analogy, but if my marriage is my marriage is good and all that and and things are going great and then i was to allow some some woman to distract me some pretty woman who looks beautiful and i'm like oh and she gave me attention and i allowed her to distract me from my marriage i would then feel like my marriage wasn't that great because that distraction was in the way and then when that then then when that obviously didn't work out right i would be like man why did I mess up my marriage, right? And so I see the same thing in this industry that people are often driven by hype. Like they they want that, they have that, and they, they allow those things to distract them from thinking logically. The great thing about Live Good is if you think about Live Good from a logical standpoint, logical, step away from any kind of emotional decision, any kind of, you know, uh, excitement or anything like that. Even when live goods exciting, step away from that in your mind and really allow yourself to say, okay, rationally, is live good a good thing? Nobody gets hurt and live good. I, I never have to worry about feeling like I'm scamming my friends or family or getting them into something that's not a good thing. I never, I know that I'm offering them value. Is is does live good make sense? Absolutely. So whenever I remove the the hype goggles, live good's the only company that I've ever seen that genuinely offers a value proposition without the excitement, right? Now, the problem is it's easy to get lost in the excitement whenever, you know, when uh, in this space, when other things are exciting, it's like, oh yeah, but I look at every every other thing out there that Brittany and I have seen been or been part of in the past nine years, and as I look at it through the or through the goggle, I don't want to say goggles, the glasses of logic, I think, you know what? The only thing that drove that was hype. It was it was it was all only driven by hype? Like if you just take it on, if you look at the business model on or the value proposition on black and white paper, you know, you put it, you you look at it black and white, like it, it was not a good thing. But when you implemented the hype, it was like, oh yeah, this is awesome. Blah, 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 blah. Whereas live good is exactly the opposite. Yes. There's hype things about, there's fun things, there's exciting things, but you remove all that, forget all that. And that right there is what tells you that your business can last and be sustainable because on black and white paper, when you put it down, it's like, no, this is a genuine value proposition. It genuinely <laughs> makes sense. And so I encourage you really just as you're building, 
just because, and I say that to say there's a lot of, and, and the reason I say that is because there's a lot of doubts that can get in our way along the way. There's a lot of self-doubts that we can allow to get in our way. And so we have to be willing to resort back to like logical thinking and say, you know what? This is a great value proposition. This is a great thing. And that's ultimately for me, what keeps me going beyond the excitement factor, beyond the, when the excitement dies down. And that's what keeps me disciplined because excitement will only motivate you temporarily where discipline will drive you uh, continuously. So with that, that is everything I had. It's time for my better 90% to show us why she's awesome. <laughs> I don't really have that many notes. I think he thinks I have a lot of notes, but um, I was just going to say, I mean, I guess off of that um, a little bit, I guess maybe a different, I mean, um, I definitely don't go off of hype. Um, I love that Live Good doesn't have hype. Um, if you come to Vegas, you're going to realize that we're not, it's not on hype, right? It's not, it's not going to be like this rah-rah hype session and we're not, we're going to try to get you to do something or sell you something or anything like that. It's going to be heart. It's going to be belief. It's going to be everybody that is there pouring into each other. So it's going to be totally different um, than if you've been in another company this event is going to be totally different than any event you've ever been to um, because Live Good is different. Um, but I was going to say, don't make irrational decisions in times of momentum. OK, I mean, we um, Tim talked to us, you know, he came up, you know, was talking to us about a bunch of things um, this past week before we got on this call. And some things that came to mind were um, was that I mean, basically um, a lot of people, you know, like like they get into this momentum, right? And live good is very stable. Like Josh said, like we hit a rank and we almost always continue to stay at that rank and continue to build. But I mean, you can't just hit it and just take your foot off the gas, right? And just say, I'm never going to do it ever again, right? I mean, you can lose a rank if you just do nothing. Um, but that's, you know, not something that usually happens here. Um, but it is something that could happen if you just was like, oh, no, I'm done, you know? Um, but uh, the thing is, is like a lot of people get, um, I guess, get mixed up in their own hype and they start, you know, wanting things and, you know, spending a bunch of money and all that stuff. Like they hit these higher ranks, right? And they buy the fancy cars and the big houses and and they get all, you know, like all into this momentum that they have, realizing that that's not always going to be there and it's not always going to be, um, it's not something that everybody can attain. And so they're going to start to lose their audience doing those things, right? Um, Josh and I have always um, tried to keep things very simple. We've always go back to what we truly, you know, came to this industry for. We always reevaluate our why, all of those things to kind of try to keep ourselves humble, right? It doesn't matter how much money you make in this world, right? If you don't have people around you and you're not pouring into your passions and helping people. So um, for us, we always go back to that. And so we're not going to be the people you're never going to see us, you know, showing flashy things and doing all that stuff because we always want to be relatable um, to everyone that we're around. And so a lot of people do that. And then they then their audience, people are still going to follow you. Like if you are doing all the fancy stuff right and your mindset shift mindset shifts um, and you're posting all of these things on Facebook and it's, you know, this high life and like all that people are still going to follow you, but they're not going to be inspired by you anymore. And so then you're going to, your audience is going to switch. There's going to be your followers and they're not going to want to be with you, right? They're not going to want to join the mission with you because they're not going to feel like they can do what you do because you're not making it relatable to them. That's good. Right. Most people been said it. Um, you know, we were on the Friday call yesterday. So if you're on there, um, we were very excited that um, Trisha hit diamond and we have all these diamonds in the company and it is an amazing thing, but not everybody comes to live good to be diamonds, right? right. Most people come to live good to make three to $500 a month. And we need to make sure that we're always there for those people. It's great. You know, the people that want to hit diamond, they're going to hit diamond, right? You're going to have that ambition. You're going to, you're going to go for it, you know, even if there's no's and all those things, right? Because you're going to have that desire. But we're here for the people that just want that breathing room in their life, right? 
that's what Josh and I always go back to. That's what we wanted when we got into this industry. We never, ever thought that we would ever quit our jobs, that we would be traveling and doing all the things that we do and spending every day together. We didn't know that. We didn't think that that was, I mean, you could, we couldn't dream past the next day half the time. So, but for us, we needed right? That three to $500 a month. We needed that extra breathing room, that truck payment. I mean, heck the grocery bill, all those things that people are struggling with when they go to bed at night. Those are the things that we need to be helping people with. And those are the things we need to continue to be relatable to other people, because that's how we're going to bring people into live good, right? We're going to be, to be the difference, right? To be the change that this industry needs to going back to the basics when this industry was created long, long ago, when it was just helping people be able to get by. Not about all the fanciness, like this industry completely pivoted to, you know, like how much money can I make and all these fancy things. And that's not what it was created to be. And so live good is a way to bring it back, bring it back to the simple, bring it back to the people that just want the small things. Right. And so and then I also wanted to talk um, a little bit about Vegas. Um. I'm excited about Vegas. I love events. It's like one of my favorite things because um, we love to be around people. If you haven't noticed, we're very passionate. Um, We seem to be like pretty energetic people on Zoom. We are not as energetic. Like, I mean, I know you probably think that we're energetic and we're, you know, smiles and all that. But when you meet us in person, we are way beyond that. A lot of people tell us, you know, like, oh my gosh, I loved you on Zoom. And then they meet us in person. They're like, wow. (laughs) Like we want to see you guys in person more often because it's just, it's a different feeling because being in person with people is a different feeling. I get that you guys probably can feel our passion and our heart and it's an emotion, but in-person emotion is so much different. The connection is so much different. And so um, being in Vegas is definitely something I can't recommend anymore like be there figure out a way get with one of the leaders that are on the flyer like we will help you figure out a way to be in that room like there is a way right we can break down you know what you need and cost we can help you share rooms with people all of those things like find a way to be there i promise it'll be worth it even if you're sleeping on a cot or on the floor or any of those things or if you're just flying in you know for 24 hours whatever it takes it will feed that belief in you to continue to soar past this, right? To for us to, you know, be that that you know nation that the, the people have lived good to continue. We're only one year in, right? Um, and I would say, um, if you're international, okay, I know that there's a lot of international people on this call. I know that you can't might not be able to get to the event, right? You're having your own events in different places. If you have somebody in the U.S. on your team. Invite them to the Vegas event. Connect them with somebody that's going to be there. We will take care of your people. We are all live good, right? It doesn't matter whose team's on what. Like if you have people, you need to get them in the room. Even if you can't be there, we will take care of them. We will help them. We will feed into them. We will train them all those things so that your team can grow even if you can't be there in person. So still promote it if you're in another country and you can't. We have people like in South Africa, I know they really want to be there. They're not going to be able to be there, but they're going to invite people there, right? Um, Because that's the whole point is growing, right? This is going to be the biggest, the biggest event that Live Good has had in the United States. And it's going to be, I mean, it's going to be one of those that we're going to think back on and look back on five, 10 years from now. You know, I'm going to be like, oh my gosh, that event at that time, we felt like was huge and it was, it's going to be small, right? Um, Because, (laughs) but I mean, I know that feeling, right? I've I've seen growth um, in companies and I've seen growth in events and all those things. So I know it's possible. And then also, I was just going to say, we are only one year in, you guys, it's one year. And we, I mean, don't take your foot off the gas. Like we're on a mission. Like I get some people are just in this for just a little bit. You know, maybe they're just in this for the products. But those that are in this for the mission, don't take your foot off the gas. Don't look at the fancy, shiny objects. Don't look at the paychecks, all those things. Continue to focus on what we are doing for this industry, what we are doing for people, how we are paying back people who invested in us and all those other companies that didn't get to get what they wanted, right? That wanted something 
and never was able to achieve those things, right? Like we are in it for them. Like we need to continue to push forward. You know, I mean, we're just babies in this company. This company is just a baby. We are looking for, you know, where Amazon is and all those things. Like that is what we can be. And we can all say that we did that together and we are united together. We were the OGs of Live Good, right? So um, that's really all I had, I think, um, unless I have any more on my notes. Yeah, I just, I want to, uh, Brittany just brought up a powerful topic for me. Um, so what is my driving force in Live Good? Here's the deal. There's a, the, Brittany and I have been offered to make a lot of money uh, by uh, doing goofy things. Um, we've been offered, uh, we've been offered uh, contracts and bonuses and um, all the things that these that companies offer. Um, and and my driving factor in live good, Brittany just brought it up, um, is I owe it to a lot of people that have trusted in me for a lot for many years um, to to pay them back for trusting in me. I owe it to a lot of people to um, to give them something they can believe in, um, give them something they can that can give them hope because. There's a lot of people, the reason that we've had the success we've had, there's a lot of people that have trusted us in us previously, believed in us previously. And while we've had success, they've been hurt. And I, it's time for me to make amends. It's time for me to fix that. It's time for me. So if there's no amount of money that a person can offer me to go against that commitment. And so when Brittany just talked about that, it made me a little emotional just because I have a lot of people that have trusted in me and I'm like, man, I've let them down. And while we've had success, I've let them down because they've been forking out hundreds of dollars a month on overpriced products or spent $2,400 to get started themselves in something or um, and were garage qualified or whatever it may be. And, and I've let these people down and now... I am on an absolute mission to go back and fix it. And even if they do nothing, I'm going to build so big and so massive that if they will just stay in here and I don't, I'm not telling you to sit around and wait on spillover because the truth is spillover ain't going to pay you nothing compared to what this comp plan can pay you. But for me, what I love about spillover is that I can create it for the people they're like, you know what? I'm going to trust you one more time, Josh. Mm -hmm. You know what? I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you, I'm, I'm going to give this one one more go. And, and I can tell them with strength, if you'll stay in this thing long enough, if you'll stay here with me long enough, I'm going to build it. I will build this. I want you to come with me. I want you to build with me. But if that ain't for you, that ain't for you. But if you'll just put yourself out there long enough and stay in this long enough, you're going to see checks start rolling in. And I'm going to tell you, I start, I have, I have a buddy who texted me the other day and he's like, dude, I haven't done a doggone thing with live good. And I got $10 in my bank account. It's like 10 to $10 and 75 cents deposited in his bank account. He's like, I have not done a doggone thing with it. He said, you weren't lying. I said, I wasn't lying, buddy. I said, thanks for trusting me. I love you. And so that man, that where else can you do that? Where else can, you can't do that anywhere else. You cannot do that. I don't care how much money they offer me to do something else. I don't care what kind of contract or what NDA, non-disclosure agreement. If you guys don't know in this industry, people offer like bridge contracts. When you're known as a leader in this industry, you, they will offer you some crazy stuff. Um, and <laughs> Brittany and I have been offering some stuff to do some stuff. And we will not accept anything that anybody else can't have. Right. Yeah, no, I, I'm not for if if the if the little guy and when I say little guy, I don't mean it in a condescending way because I'll be forever. I'm a former foster kid from Southern Illinois. I'll forever be a little guy in my heart. If the little guy can't start exactly like I did and have the same do the same things, and if they if they if I got a deal, then they better get the deal too, right? And I so we don't believe in that stuff, but yeah, that's that's what we got. You guys, I think that, um, like Josh said, let's be the fire, right? 
Um, let's start a fire and live good, right? It's fire started Fridays, you know? I mean, that's like the whole theme anyway. Like be the fire here. Let's continue to just pour gas on the fire. Let's be united um, in, in social media, be united in person, be united for live good all across the world um, together. And let's do something good for everyone. Just know the power of one. That's something else I, I guess I should have talked about today. The power of one. Um, I think too many people miss that. Um, and so in our first company, um, and I'll, it was AdvoCare for those that don't know, we we started in AdvoCare and AdvoCare's, they, they had some issues with the FTC and all that. And so if you know that story, it's irrelevant. Um, but in our first company in AdvoCare, the uh the top earner ever in the company here's here's where this person came from um so the the company had got started it was a couple years in it was you know is a new company and, and today a lot of people have heard of it right it ultimately got to nearly a billion dollar company and it was 25 years old um but when it got started it was a pretty new company and um there's there's a guy named mark um who who was really working his tail off and and building that thing and helping um, and he he had introduced a guy who was kind of a little bit weird and who had introduced a guy who was a little bit weird. Um, and, and you know, the, sometimes that's cool. Uh, it, it is what it is. We're all a little bit weird in our way. But but this guy would show up, this second level guy, he would show up um, to events and he would he would be around Mark and he never really did anything in. He never really did anything. Um, and he was he was involved for about two or three years. Now, mind you, LiveGood's a year old, guys. So I want you to understand this from a LiveGood perspective as I talk about this. This guy was involved for about two or three years. Um, and then he was at an event and he walked up to this man named Mark, um, who was the top leader at the time in the in that company. Um, and he said, hey, I, I got a guy. I got a guy. You got to meet him. You got to meet him. He's he's a coach. You got to meet him. He's he's uh just, you know, you, you got you got to meet him. He, he'll, he'll kill it. And Mark's thinking, man, there's, you, you've been here for three years. What do you, okay, whatever. And Mark's thinking this guy's crazy. And Mark introduced, Mark is then introduced to a man, and I'll say his name um, because I love and respect him. His name is Danny McDaniel, um, who was an alcoholic football coach in Texas um, at the time. And, um, he had, he had a drinking issue. Um, he was a football coach and he met Mark and, um, and Mark, and he told Mark and Mark, you know, shared his story. And, and then Danny said to Mark, he said, I want to make a million dollars a month doing this thing. <laughs> and, and Mark goes, I don't even think that's possible in his mind. He didn't say that out loud. And so he said, and all Mark said was, well, I guess we need to get to work. Anywho, Danny McDaniel went on to be the top earner ever in AdvoCare, and um, the man who introduced Danny uh, ended up willing his business, ended up dying and willing his business to his son, who until the downfall of AdvoCare was making uh, over twenty five thousand dollars a month, um, all because of an introduction that led to hundreds of thousands of people. Um, so I say that to say, um, we're just getting started. Understand that who you introduce that introduces someone, that introduces someone, the top earner ever in live good ain't here yet. They're not here yet. <laughs> they, they, we, they haven't even been, they might show up. I hope they show up at Vegas or I hope the person that introduces them. I hope that the story that comes from, from this is the person that introduces the person that introduces the top earner ever in live good there. I hope that their story is this. I hope their story is well, I went to this doggone Vegas thing and I was I was scared and I made myself good. I went there and I, I was excited afterwards and I had to tell a friend and then they told a friend and then they told so-and-so and everybody globally knows who so-and-so is because they're the top earner ever in Live Good. And it creates such a massive wave of momentum that everyone who decides to get in, plug in and stay in benefits from that massive wave of moment of momentum. Um, and I hope that that's the story. Uh, I always kind of play those things out in my mind. I hope that that's the story because boy, that would be awesome, wouldn't it? <laughs> so with that, that's all we got 